sure you have heard of the famous Irish giant and warrior, leader of the Fianna, Finn McCool. We'll have a couple of Finn McCool stories for you. And the first one concerns an American, a rich American, over in Ireland trying to find his Irish roots. And he was walking down the street one day and uh, he was going past an antique shop and in the window display of this shop was this huge skull, massive white skull. And below the skull it said, Skull of Finn McCool. Well, the American couldn't believe it. And he went in and he said, uh, I couldn't help noticing in your window you have a skull and it's the skull of Finn McCool. Is that the famous Finn McCool? The antique dealer said, yes, of course it is. There only is one Finn McCool. Are you interested in it? And the American said that he was. And anyway, they dealt for a while. And as they, as they say here, the uh, antique dealer went up and the American would come down and uh, they met somewhere in the middle. Well, the American bought this huge skull and he had it shipped away over to Texas where he came from where no doubt he had it on display in his, his kitchen. Well, a few years later, the American came back to Ireland to tie up a few loose ends in his family tree. And he was walking down the same street. And in the window of the antique dealers, there was a smaller skull, a normal-sized skull. And it said below it, the skull Finn McCool. What? Well, the American was furious and he went in and he said, excuse me, I was here some time ago and I bought a huge skull from you and you said it was the skull of Finn McCool. I see now you have another skull in the window and you're saying that it's Finn McCool. Ah, the antique dealer says, that's right. He says, but that skull was when he was a wee boy. But anyway, I want to tell you another story about Finn McCool. There are many of them, of course, and I'm sure you will have heard some of them. But this is one of my favourite. Finn McCool was the leader of the Fianna. The Fianna was a band of Irish, ancient Irish warrior poets. They had to be uh, skilled in the arts of warfare. They had to be great hunters. And they had to be great poets as well. And they had to pass many tests before they were accepted into the Fianna. And when they became a member of that esteemed band, they had to swear an oath that they would protect Ireland from all her enemies. Well, of course, Finn McCool was the most famous the fiercest, the most loyal, and the, the best known leader of the Fianna. <clears throat> and one time Finn McCool's wife died, McNeish, her name was, and he was bereft. And all the members of the Fianna loved Finn McCool so much they couldn't bear to see him so sad and, and grieving so and so they decided to arrange another marriage for him to a young woman called Gronya. Gronya was a princess. She was the daughter of Cormac MacEart, the High King of Ireland. Well, Gronya wasn't um, too enamoured with the idea of having to marry Finn McCool, the ageing Finn McCool by this stage notwithstanding his reputation as a great warrior. But, of course, it was an arranged marriage. She had no say in the matter. And uh, her father, Cormac McGirt, the High King, he was delighted that his daughter was to be married to Finn McCool, leader of the Fianna. Well, they had a betrothal ceremony. And they all gathered round the court of Cormac McGart and all the <clears throat> members of the Fianna. 
and they drank eel and they drank meat and they feasted on uh, roasted meats and, and so on. Well, one of the Fianna was a young man called Dermot. Dermot was one of the most handsome members of the Fianna. But Dermot had a love spot on his forehead, which he normally kept covered up with a hat. And it was said that any woman whose eyes fell upon that love spot would fall instantly in love with Dermot. Well, as the night progressed and they, they drank more and more eel, of course, Dermot's hat came off. And when Gronya saw the love spot on his forehead, she fell instantly in love with him, head over heels, helplessly. Well, uh, Gronya decided that she would put a potion in all the tankards and the tumblers of all the revellers. And very soon they were all asleep except Dermot. And then she came to him. She told him how much that she loved him. She begged him to take her away, run away with her. Well, at first Dermot refused out of his love and loyalty for Finn McCool and the other members of the Fianna. But Gronya was beautiful and her womanly wiles were, well, considerable. And eventually she talked Dermot round and they ran away together. Well, when the other members of the Fianna woke up and Finn McCool came to his senses, he realised what had happened and he was furious. There's a long, long story called The Pursuit of Dermot and Gronya that talks about the, the, the hunt for the two lovers. But it takes about two hours to tell. And I'm not going to tell it here. I'm going to tell you a shortened version of that. You see, this tale has been told for generations, the length and breadth of Ireland and Scotland too. There are three wee islands out in the North Channel called Rum, Egg and Muck. And Muck means pig in the Gaelic. And Muck was the Isle of Pigs. You see, there was a race of wild boar there. And it was said that their bristles were poisonous. One touch from the bristle of one of these wild boar would kill a man. And they were the biggest and most ferocious wild boar anywhere. But of course, the Fianna being great hunters, they liked nothing more than to go over to the Isle of Muck and pit themselves against these wild boar. You see, after Finn McCull found Dermot and Gronya, a peace settlement was reached because Dermot was much loved by the members of the Fianna, not least Oscar, he was Finn McCull's grandson. And so things were smoothed over and Dermot and Gronya were allowed to live in peace together. But on one of their hunting trips over to the Isle of Muck, Dermot killed a wild boar. Or at least he mortally wounded it. And as he went forward to the wild boar, it gave one last kick. And one of those bristles struck Dermot on the leg. And instantly he fell to the ground as the poison coursed through his veins. Well, seeing his young beloved friend in mortal agony, Finn McCool ran to the well of healing. He returned with a cup of its life-giving waters. He went forward to give Dermot those waters that would have revived him. But then he remembered about that night and the betrothal feast. The night that Gronya put a potion in all their drinks. He remembered that uh, Dermot had carried Gronya away. Finn McCool's young bride-to-be. He remembered how hurt he felt. 
And he took that cup of water and he poured it on the ground in front of Dermot. But then his love for Dermot, his fellowship, took over. He felt guilt and he ran away back to the well of healing. He came back with another cup of its life-giving waters. He was about to give it to Dermot on the ground. But then those old feelings of resentment and anger rose up in him. And he couldn't help himself. He poured the water out onto the ground once more. And then he felt a sting of guilt and shame at his behaviour. And once more, he ran to the well of healing. He returned a third time with another cup of its life-giving waters. And this time, he went down on one knee. He cradled Dermot's head in his hand and he poured that water onto Dermot's lips. It trickled across his lips and down through his beard. For alas, Finn McCool was too late. And Dermot breathed his last in Finn McCool's arms. And Finn McCool, the bravest, the fiercest, the most loved and the most famous leader of the Fianna, proved that day that he too could be weak on occasion. And it is said that he bowed his head and wept with shame and grief at the loss of his young friend Dermot.